Hi, this is Wynn Claybaugh. Welcome to my Best of Masters weekly audio blog for AmericanSalon.com. Next up is one of my favorite clips from the last 20 years of inspiring interviews from Masters Audio Club. Well, it's taken me a long time to get to the point to attract the kind of people that I want. But yes, I think they, they know now because I have a reputation. I used to have a reputation of being the nicest salon owner in town. And now I think I have a reputation of being someone who doesn't suffer fools in the neighborhood. Explain that more. They think I'm not nice. Really? Yeah. Because I don't, I don't have time for people that don't want to really work hard for their job. You know, it's, right. I'm not interested in mediocre at all. I have to tell you something. I mean, for me, the most difficult thing is to divide uh, being a nice guy and being a business person. And, right. and it's hard to, to draw that line and say, you know what, this is for, for money and I love you, but right. you're out of here. You're yeah, fired because you, know, you don't have the same game plan that I have. And my game plan is for profit. Exactly. And that's fine, too. That's okay. Yeah. Totally. Now, how long have you been doing session work or photography work? Well, I did my first photo shoot in 1989. Okay. That was a year after you graduated from beauty school. What was that yeah. photo shoot? That, that was something I on still your like own it. that you put it together. Yes. You got the photographer. Yeah, and the models. You got the models. Yes. Did you get a makeup artist or you did the makeup? I did the makeup. Who did the wardrobe styling? I did. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was the answer. <laughs> right. I still like it. I got it published, too. It was published. Really? In passion. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> How much is your staff involved in photo work? There's a few of them that are extremely involved. We have uh, about four. On their own or with you? With or me. Or both? With me. Okay. Yeah. We do it together, definitely. I'm the photo shoot junkie of the salon, and there's several junior junkies. And being a junkie means that you're doing photo shoots how often? Uh, well, I do them all the time, and sometimes I take the pictures. The major ones we do, we only do about two a year, like really serious photo shoots, like we in New York. Just two a year. But we do a lot of them locally. Okay. Yeah, tons and tons. I would say we probably do at least one a month. So the photos that you entered, which got you the nomination and then the award for Naha Hairdresser right. of the Year, was that from one of these major photo shoots yes. in, in New York or was that from local photo shoots? No, it was a major photo shoot. Okay. And, and just because I know that our audience is, is thinking this, wanting to know... What would a major photo shoot cost you? That photo shoot cost somewhere between twelve and 15000 Okay. And broken down how? Well, because I decided to hire a really expensive model. I was expecting to have a good photo shoot, and I was going to enter it in Naha, but I didn't expect to win because I never had before. So that wasn't specifically the only thing I was doing it for. Okay. I was trying to do it to appeal to fashion for my book. And when you say book, I know what you're talking about, but explain. Portfolio, my portfolio. portfolio. And because I'm a salon owner in Denver, I don't have an opportunity to be a real editorial session stylist right. because we don't have editorial magazines. Right. So I have to do a sort of faux editorial book. So Fashion Week in New York City, of course, is thinking, hey, we need a hairdresser called Bumble and Bumble. Exactly. You're not Bumble and Bumble. Right. But I do get called now because I've been doing it so long. Because of what we're talking about right. here. So this whole idea of stick with it, I think you've kind of like outlined some steps to make this happen. Right. Let's talk about number one. Number one is only do what you love because I had a lot of jobs before I was a hairdresser and I didn't like any of them and I wasn't particularly good at them and I didn't care about them. So the first Back up. What do you mean by that? Well, let's put it this way. I knew I didn't want to be a clerk in a store, not because I didn't think it was an honorable job. It's just that I wanted different things than what my parents had or what I was doing in high school. I knew that it was important for me to figure things out so that I could have the life I wanted to have. But I could only do that if I loved what I was doing. Okay. And that's the only thing that you would give everything for is something you love, okay. obviously. Have you ever had a staff member, a hairdresser, working in your salon or wanting to work in your salon that really didn't love it? Yes, many times. And what do you do? How, how do you get consult rid of them. that person? I get rid of them. But do you, like, consult with them? <laughs> of course. <laughs> and they say, you know what? You don't love hairdressing. Right. Absolutely. And I say, we're never going to get along because I love this so much and I care about it, and we're not going to click. 
because you are never going to be there just because you want to be there. You're going to be there because it's your job, but not because it produces because a it gives you pleasure. Because it gives you pleasure. It gives me pleasure to do a photo shoot or to do a show, to put together outfits, to pick out shoes, to do that. I like to do that. I enjoy it. <laughs> 